Uh, Dean Blandino, Fox NFL rules analyst, former NFL VP of officiating. He was in studio when uh, the Cowboys-Lions controversy took place at the end of the game with that two-point conversion. Dean joins us now. What did you see in the moment with that play, Dean? So in the moment, what I saw was it was unusual, to say the least, because typically when a lineman reports, it's just that lineman. They swipe the front of their jersey. They go to the referee. But actually, there were there were two linemen, Panay Sewell and, and Taylor Decker, that went to referee Brad Allen. And then a third lineman that was running onto the field, Dan Skipper, um, toward Allen. And then, and then obviously, Brad announces 70 is reporting is eligible. And, uh, and, I, and that, that, you know, that whole, the whole play really predicates on 68 being eligible because he's going to play the end of the line and he's the one that's going to go out and catch the pass. So it was unusual to see two and a third offensive lineman kind of going toward the referee to almost make it look like they were, you know, one or, or two or all three were reporting. But obviously there was there was some kind of miscommunication that took place because the Lions certainly wanted 68 to be the eligible player. Did the Lions do anything wrong? No, I, the Lions did not do anything wrong. They, they, and I have no doubt in my mind, obviously not knowing what was said, but I have no doubt in my mind that 68 said that he was reporting to the referee. You don't, you can't run that play without 68. And that's practice. This is something, this is a two point try with so much riding that game playoff implications. So there's no doubt in my mind that 68 is reporting. I do think the way they presented it um, created a little bit of confusion for Brad Allen. I think he went too fast. I think there's some accountability on, on the official side as well. 70 had reported earlier during the game. He sees 70 coming in. He assumes it's 70 and uh, and goes too fast. So I think there's there's – I don't think the Lions did anything wrong by rule. I just think the environment created – a situation where, where, quite frankly, Brett Allen assumed something that wasn't true. Okay, but they gather up after that. Can you, you know, I mean, why can't you just correct that? Or why doesn't, can the home office help them correct that? The Lions were saying, Jared Goff was saying, Dan Campbell was saying, hey, he reported, he was the tackle eligible here. Why couldn't they just say, you know what, we made a mistake? You know, at that point, I don't think they thought they made a mistake. I think Brad Allen thought that 70 was reporting. So, and they still, in the pool report, they had 70 reporting. So I don't think the the league or the officiating crew thought that they made a mistake. Um, you know, they he did make the announcement. I don't think it came over the broadcast, but I have seen some videos on social media where the announcement was made in the stadium. Um, a lot of times those announcements are hard to hear when you're at field level. And, and I just think that that miscommunication combination of going too fast, what what the Lions presented. And again, I think you can't there's certainly accountability. I'm not I'm not absolving the officiating crew in this situation. I think Brad just went into kind of auto drive mode and assumed 70 was reporting. Okay, and, and help me understand when the coaches get together with the officials prior to the start of the game, what is discussed? And do you think that that was discussed by Dan Campbell to the officials? Yeah, I'm sure it was discussed. So 90 minutes before the game, two officials go to the home coach, two officials go to the away coach. They visit in the locker room. They go through any questions the coach may have, um, any special plays, any gadget plays. And and from my understanding, Dan did explain to the officials that 70 would report during the game. Um, we do have a, a tackle eligible play that we may run. I don't know to what detail or what extent it was explained to the crew pregame, but that's normal protocol. That happens every game when you have something because you don't want the officials to be caught off guard in a situation like that and maybe throw a flag where it it, it isn't a foul. And I think that's why those those meetings happen. And I know that a conversation took place between the officials and Coach Campbell before the game. It just looked it felt like the officials were blaming the Lions. Like they they created, they were trying to be too cute, you know, that it just felt that way in the post-game interview. It it, it did, and, and I've explained it that way, too. Look, I think the Lions were trying to disguise who was eligible, but there's nothing illegal about that. There, There's no, there's no um, you know, foul there. And I do, again, I can't imagine them having this play in, in this situation, and 68 is not going to tell the referee, I'm eligible. And again, I, I do think it's just the official went too fast, 
Um, and, you know, here we are talking about it. Talking to Dean Blandino, Fox NFL rules analyst, looking back on this season, what stands out good and bad with the referees? Well, I think there's been some high profile misses. I think you look at this crew, the Brad Allen crew, they've had a tough year, quite frankly. You go back to the Packers Chiefs game. They've had some situations. I do think the the league is is using technology more. And I think that's a good thing. Keep the game moving. Correct obvious mistakes. But the scrutiny just continues to increase. And I think we're I honestly think we're at a tipping point. I think we're at a tipping point with officiating and where do we want to go from here do we do we need to implement more replay and more technology um you know my personal feelings is we got to get back to the basics the core what is you know we're missing pass interference we're not missing it because of technology we're missing it either we're out of position we're not getting good direction we're not being consistent so i do think we're at a tipping point and uh, and i think the the you know ownership and, and as we get into the competition committee process in the off season I think officiating is going to be a big topic on the agenda. Okay, but what would be your advice or recommendations of now what should the NFL do? You said we're at a tipping point. Okay, I'm going to make you the commissioner. What do you do? So for me, I think we've got to take a good look at the officiating department structure. We need to, for for very long, it's been officiating is, and for lack of a better term, a necessary evil, right? It's the officials are important. They're critical to the outcome of the game. But but when, whenever we're talking about it, it's usually negative. But it's such an integral part of, of, of what happens on the field on, on game day. So I think you got to look at the department, look at the structure. Do we have the right people in place? Are we giving good direction? The competition committee process, that process, is there is there conversation during the season? Are the competition committee members, and it's hard because you've got head coaches, Mike Tomlin, Mike Vrabel, they're trying to win football games. They're not, they don't have time to jump on conference calls and do these other things. But can we create a structure where you can have conference calls throughout the season? Maybe it's once a month, whatever it is, to kind of see where we are with officiating. What are the issues? How can we correct it before the season ends and not just – because once the season ends, if we get through the playoffs without any controversy, everybody will kind of tend to forget. We'll get into February and March, and uh, and nothing will get done. I do think the league needs to take a good, hard look at officiating the structure and how we're training these officials. Yeah, and, and you bring up a great point. Imagine if this happened in the postseason. That's when we have change. When it, yep. you know, it's really impactful. Um, and imagine if it happened against the Cowboys, like it went against the Cowboys and Jerry Jones all of a sudden went on a crusade, things would change. No doubt. I mean, we saw the 2018 NFC Championship game with the missed call and pass difference. We changed the rule, and it didn't like didn't work. It lasted one year. So the playoffs are going to be, I really, and it's unfortunate, but I think the playoffs are the, that's the, the key point. If the playoffs go well and there's no controversy, people will forget about the regular season and they'll say, everything's great. If we have a bunch of these types of plays in the playoffs, then I think it, it it's all heightened. And then you're right. And especially if it happens, certain teams, yeah. more high profile, um, I think then that, that, that drives change. When the official goes under the hood, how many voices does he hear? How, how many people are talking to the official? It, 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 it is, personally, there's too many voices right now. You have a replay official, you have several people in New York at the, at the league office, and there's probably four or five people talking to each other. And, and I think that's too many people. Um, I think it's become more of a committee decision. Um, you know, when I was there, it was it was myself and the referee communicating through the play. And we were trying to just get to a consensus. Anytime you add more people to the mix, it's going to get harder to get to a consensus. It's going to take longer. You're going to be less efficient. So there, there's probably four or five people right now that are communicating during those reviews. And I, I think they're taking too long. Great to talk to you again. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. As long, you know, one of these days, we'll, well, there'd be no reason to have you on if everything's good, Dean. No, no, only only when things go go bad. So, <laughs> thanks for joining us as always. Thanks for having me, Dean Blandino, Fox NFL rules analyst. You know, when Fritzy reaches out, it's like, uh, you know, hey, Dean, Dan wants to talk to you. Oh, great. 